Welcome to Conversations with Healers, a podcast and video interview series that features intimate, soulful, and cozy conversations with self-healers and healers. Healer to healer, we dive into all aspects of self-healing and healing and being and becoming a healer. I am Damla Aktekin. I am a healer and the host of this podcast, and I can't wait for you to listen to this conversation. If you are new to this podcast, please take a moment to subscribe so that you can be aware of new episodes. I also invite you to visit a dropofom.com, a d r o p o f o m.com, where I share a lot of free resources for self-healing and healing, and you can take a free quiz to find out what your energetic wounds are and how they may show up in your life. Discovering what your wounds are is the first step in healing them. I hope you enjoy this episode. There is one more thing I would like to share with you before you listen to this episode. I created a wonderful container to help you process the collective trauma of the pandemic and begin to heal your energetic wounds. It is an energy healing membership called Chakra Bliss Vault. Every month you will receive three new crystal healing sessions Plus, you'll immediately have access to my entire energy healing recording library when you sign up. The membership is really affordable and will continue to be so. You can find out more about it at adropofom.com, A-D-R-O-P-O-F-O-M.com. I invite you to make your healing a priority and invest in your well-being by becoming a Chakra Bliss Vault member. Hi everyone, this is Dam Laktikin with A Drop of Om, and I have here with me today Dr. John Ryan, who is a board-certified specialist physician, a healer, and the founder of Unity Field Healing, which is an evolutionary quantum-based energy healing method that I feel so lucky to have been certified in. We'll talk all about that. And this is also um, Unity Field Healing has been endorsed by Lee Carroll and uh, Cryon, which is an energetic being channeled by Lee Carroll. So we'll we'll dive into all that. But John, thank you so much and welcome. Hey, Damla, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me and welcome to everybody who's listening. I'm delighted to be here. I am so excited to chat with you. I want to, I'm sure you've told this a million times, but can you give us in big, you know, brush strokes, what sort of um, brought you here to this moment? Because I know you're actually leading, um, shall I say, a dual life. You're, you're still a physician, you're an MD, and you're a healer, and you're now training other healers in this new methodology that you have founded. Um, so what led you here? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I would have to say the creator. <laughs> right. No, it's uh, in very practical terms. I, I am a physician. I'm a specialist in diagnostic imaging. But when I was uh, just at the end of my medical training years ago, back in the late 1980s, early 1990s, I, was, I began to have a series of experiences that were very peculiar and experiences I didn't understand at all at the time, where I would live things like I would, my body would begin to vibrate really powerfully when I would lay down at night. And all of a sudden I would see energies or have visions or different kinds of experiences in my mind's eye. And I would see auras sometimes like fields of energy around people or around plants or animals and pets and things like that. And then one night I was in bed and I literally popped out of my body. I had a like a super conscious out of body experience where my spirit was kind of floating around the room while my body was still asleep in the bed. And I realized at that moment in time that our consciousness exists independent of the physical form. 
but it was a profound spiritual awakening. It was one of these things that kind of happened that changes your worldview without you realizing it's happening until years have gone by and you understand the impact of an experience like that. I really wasn't a spiritual seeker. I wasn't somebody who was interested in energy or you know, healing outside of the traditional Western model. I was training in medicine. And so um, you know, this kind of happened out of the blue, but it changed me because I began to understand that we are conscious beings that exist outside of the form of our body. And as conscious beings, there's no other way to term it than spiritual beings. We're beings of spirit that kind of live in our physical bodies and we have experiences in our physical bodies. And, but what happened for me is I, as I began to see energy and have experiences like that, it inspired me to learn. And what I've come to understand personally over, over time is when it's meant to be, our soul will organize experiences for us to live. And it does it with a revelation, but then it follows up with information. It follows up with synchronicities and a, a process of guidance that helps us understand the nature of what it is that we, were, we had lived. And so I was led to different people, different sources of information, and particularly to some of the mystical information from India that speaks about Kundalini awakenings. And I realized what I was living at that point in time was a spontaneous Kundalini awakening. And this launched me into a whole field of information. And I began to explore Eastern systems of healing and Ayurvedic medicine and Chinese medicine and you know, different bodies of knowledge that understand the human condition in a very different way than we tend to in the West. And in these systems of medicine, it's appreciated that we are beings of consciousness and our experience in the body is one of the soul. In other words, we're a soul living in the body. And that healing is intimately tied to the relationship between the soul and the body. And so it launched me into a world of spiritual medicine, if you will. I began to understand that there's, sure, in the 3D world of medicine, we can understand we have conditions and diseases and all these kinds of things. But this enters into a world where we understand some of the forces or the dynamics that create the outpictured conditions. And so healing can be achieved in different ways. We can go inside the psyche or inside the consciousness and bring forward transformations that make illnesses either less likely or even sometimes resolve or go away. And so that changed my frame of reference <laughs> in terms of how I saw life, not just medicine and healing, but life in general. And you know, one thing led to another and I, I was brought along a trajectory where you know, I had integrated meditating and different things into my own life. And, my own, for my own well-being. And I began to have visions and I was shown in visionary experiences, things about the quantum nature of reality and in particularly the quantum nature of human DNA. And I was taken through a process, I guess, if you will, where I was shown how this unfolds when a human being is born, what happens on a quantum energetic level and how our soul bridges an energy that joins us when we're here on the planet through a, a structure that I call the 24th chromosome or our quantum DNA. And uh, it also introduced me to other things in, in this meditation of potentials, I guess is the best way to say it, of being able to work in this space to begin to bring healing in a new way. Now, Coupled with all of that, the information of what's happening on the planet right now is very important. And I was given information in messages and you know, through other sources of people who bring information to the planet about the ascension process and why this is such a special time on the planet. The very peculiar thing that uh, is part of this story is I began to live all these changes in my own, you know, my own personal life around 1987. And it's been kind of addressed that this was a, a very special time that people refer to as the harmonic convergence. And it was explained that this is the beginning of a change on the planet that's referred to as an ascension process. And the planet is being altered in ways to help humanity move into a new field of energy where healing and transformation are 
going to be based on a very different paradigm than the energy from which existed before that point in history. And so it's coupled with a big shift of energy and consciousness on the planet, as well as within human beings living on the planet. And so we can get into that if you'd like. It's a whole other <laughs> <laughs> point of discussion. I but <laughs> I feel like you're bringing it to a beautiful place, which um, I love how you said you your own transformation sort of was happening at the same time where a planetary transformation and shift and change was coming into existence um, or was already culminating. I want to jump to unity field healing and I want to give the listeners my experience. But before that, um, can you can you tell us what it is? What is unity field healing? Sure. So unity field healing is a modality of energy work. And it can be used for a couple of different purposes. It can be used in the context of healing because we can work energetically with the human body in different ways to invoke healing through energetic changes. But it's also a tool to support people through the process of ascension. And so it kind of, it's two phase, two faceted, if you will, or multifaceted, but it certainly encompasses those two points of, of contact. And really what it's about is understanding that as human beings, we have a structure that's part of our quantum energy that's referred to as our 24th chromosome or the quantum DNA or spiritual DNA. People use all kinds of different names and terms to describe it. But it's a field of information that comes from the soul when we are being born into a physical body on the planet. So we have our genes that come, you know, of course, from our mom and our dad, the maternal and the paternal genetics and the physical chromosomes that we're aware of in our cells as human beings. But this is a quantum energy field. And the way I think about it is it's the field of energy and information that governs the expression of chromosomes. In other words, it's the big computer behind the scene, if you will. It's the energy and the information behind the scene that governs the expression and the non-expression of genetic things. And so it's much more complex than that, but really it's a simple way of understanding it. And this field of information has many things in it and our access to it has been very limited. And that's all by design. Again, it's a whole other topic that we could go into off on a tangent, but just suffice it to say that human beings limit the information and the knowledge they bring with them when we're born so that we can focus our life around a certain kind of an experience. But because of the ascension, this quantum energy field is being stirred awake. And what's happening to us as humans because of that is we're becoming aware of our multidimensional nature. Now that sounds very lofty and interesting, but just to make it practical, if you have the experience of remembering another lifetime, and many human beings today do, if that's an experience that you've known, you become aware that you can remember yourself living now and living at another point in time. And if you're living at two points in time, or you're aware of memories from two points of time, you're in two dimensional spaces at the same time. So that's an example of multidimensionality. And the information that is in this chromosome, in this molecule, is really multidimensional like that. Because our soul, of course, is aware not only of our current lifetime, but other lifetimes we've lived, and even more information than that. Like we're, our relationship to spiritual things and why we're here, our purpose, our plan, and all that kind of stuff, and our relationship with other people. And so as this energy is being stirred awake in this way, we're going through a transformation. And the, the transformation itself can create certain kinds of symptoms and experiences. People talk to, refer to this as ascension symptoms, if you will. But it can also stir memories that bring us closer to energies that may be affecting us in this lifetime that we weren't aware of. And the easiest way to understand that is 
imagine if you have a certain passion, say you love arts and you love everything about France and you love the Eiffel Tower and you love Parisian things and you're really attracted to things of, of French history. And you might ask yourself, well, where does that come from? Why do you have that passion? Why do you have that interest? An example might be you lived a lifetime in that country or in the energy of France. And therefore you're drawn to it because it's in your Akashic memory. You actually have conscious experiences. And so your attraction to it is based upon that memory, if that makes sense to, to everybody. Equally, we can have experiences outside of this lifetime that may be affecting us, but not in a positive way, in a more challenging way. So say, for example, we drowned or we were, you know, we went through a violent death of some kind or we were persecuted in a, another lifetime. It may affect the way we see things or the way we feel in our current lifetime in a mysterious way, it's affecting us, but we don't know why we have these perceptions or these states of mind. And so with the ascension and the stirring of the energy, a lot of these things come up to the surface and people start to go through transformations and they don't know why they're interested in things and becoming disinterested in things and passionately drawn to learn about certain things or why they're so afraid or not feeling well or have high energy and low energy and all this kind of stuff. And so some of this stuff is a bleed over from information in this quantum field. And so the work is really designed to go into this space and help clear the energy or recalibrate the energy to make a strong connection, if you will, or form a recalibration within the energy system to help put things in alignment for an individual's wellness. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a, a complicated answer, but it's as precise as I can be. <laughs> no, it's, actually, it's, it's a lot of, um, there's a lot we could dive into in that. I just want to, um, first of all, tell listeners about the three sessions, because there are three sessions in the Unity Field Healing. Um, and the first two are specific attunements. The first one is a self-attunement, and then the second one is an attunement to the the symbol or the um, the quantum um, template, unity field template um, of the work. And then the third one is intentional support. Um, and the reason I wanted to lay it out is I wanted to share my experience, my okay. first experience. Wow, I actually please. came across your work <laughs> quite, quite a while ago, a couple of years ago now, and I've been following um, actually all of your um, the channeling sessions, which we can dive into as well. But the first time I experienced the session, um, session one, I, I just felt, I felt like I moved into sort of a different dimension. I can't even, I, as soon as I hit play, I was like, whoop, I was in a different realm. And I, I went through the attunement, session one attunement, and then I was supposed to meet a friend another mom and we met and she looked at me and she was like what did you do <laughs> you're glowing what's happening I want to do that too <laughs> and then um time went on and I actually um through the pandemic you began to offer the practitioner teachings or practitioner trainings online and I was able to do that a couple of months ago uh, which was wonderful and then the second time I went through all three sessions, um, it was so funny because the next morning I woke up and my daughter walked up to me and she was like, mom, you look, you're not grumpy. You're usually grumpy in the morning. <laughs> you look calm. <laughs> so those are my two, like I could feel a grounding and calming in me and sort of, uh, um, it's almost like a connection, like a reconnection. Um, that was the feeling and then it was funny that the people ar around me could sense and feel it too yeah. um, can you tell a little bit about the, the different sessions and like how they relate to each other and what to expect uh, absolutely from that? Yeah, yeah, yeah so the the work is comprised of three sessions so session one as you mentioned the first two sessions are more attunement sessions and they're attunements to very specific things that help us get aligned with the energy of what's changing 
And so the first session one is a, a, is a personal attunement. It's called self attunement. It's attuning with your own quantum DNA access. And this is something that we've kind of been living naive of. We didn't know about it. We didn't know it was there. So this attunement is to really help strengthen or reinforce the connection or the communication within us with this DNA access. The second is an attunement to the light template. Kind of, it's actually kind of the one you see just over my shoulder right here in the picture. It's a, a light pattern that looks like a series of circles within circles. And this is the pattern of light that came in a vision I had, and it was shown to me working inside this quantum field of energy to do the recalibrations and the healings that, that can take place. And so this session is specifically to attune the energy system to the vibration or the consciousness, however you want to view that, with this light template. And that this is foundational because we're kind of strengthening the axis and then we're attuning to the template. And then in session three, we begin to work together with those two elements and we bring intentions into the sessions. And so the intentions can be things that are related to healing. It can be about a medical condition or a psychological condition or a state of anxiety or a state of apprehension or worry, you know, all kinds of psychological things. But anything we're living in our life that we're recognizing is some kind of an interference or an issue or a problem. And you can bring that intention, healing around that intention into the session. And so you go into the session and you receive the session with the intention as a conscious point of contact. And then the energy work responds to the intention. It's kind of, it works within the space of your quantum field to help recalibrate the energy around the intention that you've brought to the session. Now, what's interesting is sometimes the point where we are aware of something is only a little piece of a bigger puzzle. So, you know, we might say, for example, I'm feeling anxious and I don't know why. And it's like, I can't relax. I can't feel peace. And I just really want to feel a sense of solace or comfort. And so you will bring that in as an intention, but we have no idea that really what's causing this state of apprehension might be the fact that we're going through this ascension process and we're starting to feel or remember other lifetimes where we were more spiritually awakened and bad things happened at that point in time. Like maybe you were doing healing work and you're you know, your village turned against you and they decided to ostracize you and excommunicate you or kill you, you know, for some reason. But you don't remember all those things, but you're feeling the energy of this awakening happening and you're apprehensive because of that. And so the energy can bypass conscious knowledge, it can go into a subconscious place to help repattern energy, even in ways we don't know about or we don't know are causing issue, if you will. And so the response to this can be very magical. And sometimes people will start to do the work and they'll say, oh gosh, John, I want, I have 17 intentions. I want to put them all into a session. <laughs> and I'll say, I well, it's actually, that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say, it's actually better to take them one at a time. Like pick up the most important thing in, in your heart right now. Like really where do you focus? And what's magical about it is sometimes five or six of the other things just kind of get washed away in the resolution of that particular intention. And then the next thing that becomes important will become clearer in your mind. And then you can do another session focused around the second intention. So it's better to do it kind of in that linear way because you can process things in a way where you see the transformations you're living and the healings that you're experiencing as you do the work. Yeah. yeah. And these are sessions that you can experience online through a practitioner like me, or there's actually an online um recording that people can access on your website as well to experience there is. these. And I'll explain actually the difference between that because it's a question I get asked quite a lot, Emma. So when this work first came to me and I was being shown how to work with the pattern and the knowledge and the understanding, um, I was doing the sessions physically with people I knew. So I would you know, do energy work with people that I was working with for one reason or another. And 
I was led to create audios that guide a ex meditative experience that can take people through the attunements of session one, session two, and session three. And that's all, that's how the work existed for almost two years. And then I was prompted to begin initiating practitioners, if you will, or training people to do the work as practitioners. And this was a really beautiful opening for me around the work because I got to share the work and I could see so many other people bringing the work to life through their healing practices. And people will sometimes say, well, what's the difference between the two sessions? The audio sessions are very powerful because we haven't kind of touched on this yet, but the energy work is supported by light beings. And so when we're doing the sessions, these these beings are there, the light beings are there working with the person doing the audio session. So very powerful in their own right. But there's nothing like the human to human contact as well. And so I find sometimes the strength of the work or the consciousness that emerges around the work is so enhanced when working with a practitioner. So both are, are good ways to do the work. But you know, when you work with a practitioner, you really get to explore some of the changes and I think go even a little bit deeper. Than, than simply doing the audio. So I really encourage people to do that. And what I love is that the, the third session, after you do the, the first and the second attunement, the third session you can repeat with a different intention each time yeah, yeah. again and again and again, which is um, wonderful. It's a wonderful resource, yeah. which brings me, me to which you, you so beautifully touched upon the light beings mm -hmm. and your channeling work. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> So this is where the doctor gets very woo-woo. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So in 2019, after I had lived a whole series of different experiences, I had meditations and visions where I was shown about doing this healing work and all that kind of stuff. A group of light beings came to me in a meditation and they were made of this beautiful blue white light. It was like white starlight, but it was tinged in this beautiful blue color. And they presented themselves in my vision first as like a ball of light. And then the ball kind of started to separate and I could see individual beings within the field of light. And they told me that their name is the Syrian Blue White Collective. And they're a group of light beings based in the consciousness of the Syrian star system that are intimately related to the earth. They've been part of the earth's evolution since the beginning. And they've been present on the earth at different points in history, more consciously, and then at other times less consciously, as the earth worked through its evolution to this point of ascension. And so they said, you know, they were here in the times of ancient Egypt and through the period of what we refer to as Atlantis and Lemuria, and that they are coming back now more consciously or channeling through human beings, if you will because of the ascension process that, we've, we, that we referenced earlier. And the, that humanity is moving so fast through these energy changes that they're there to support us, to help us, you know, the way a big brother would help a little brother or, you know, someone in your family would help you. They're there because they're part of our family of light. And they're here to help us kind of walk this transition. And they're, they're giving us tools and knowledge and all kinds of things to make this transition. The transition has to be done by humans. It's, it's our planet and we're living this process and we have to do the work, if you will. But they're there in a supportive way and in a quantum way, which is difficult for us to grasp because we're, not, we're just becoming used to the concept of quantum physics. But they're there in invisible ways and yet they can become conscious to us through channeled message, through visions and these kinds of things. But they started to do messages, give messages. They gave a message to the people who had done practitioner training in the unity field work. And they explained they're, they're masters of light and geometry, and they work within the quantum space of DNA to support transformation and healing. And that's the reason they're so uh, connected to this particular work. And that in my soul, I've worked with them before. So that's kind of how I fit into the picture, if you will, <laughs> that they're coming back, giving this knowledge so that it can be brought to life in this way. And when we do the sessions as practitioners, or when we do the trainings to become practitioners, these beings will come into the meditations we're doing or into the sessions. And they're there, they're present in a really profound and powerful way. And almost everybody who does the training feels them.
you experience them, you know they're there, you feel them working with you while you're doing the session for your client, if you will, for the person you're working with. And uh, so they are an integral part of the unity field work. But they also asked me to begin a monthly series of transmissions that are focused on the ascension. And so the first one of these took place in October of 2019. And it was called the inaugural transmission. <laughs> it sounds so regal. And then there was a series of transmissions that followed that introduced us to various things that are all foundational to understanding the ascension process. And then so this cycle went on with once a month transmissions. And the way that they would work is I would do a, a teaching session for like 90 minutes. And then there would be a group meditation transmission. And they were, in this, we would meditate together. I would be shown energetic things in my third eye while we're meditating. And then they would deliver a channeled message. And so the first of five of these transmissions were done only live in person. So I only have a recording of the transmission of those first five events. But because of COVID in March of 2020, I began to do them online because we couldn't do them in person anymore. But there was a magic in it because what happened was people from all over the world started joining into the transmission. So it went from being something local to something being really international. And now there's, there's like thousands of people tune into these transmissions each month. And so they're held on a Thursday evening in the middle of the month and people can um, you know, subscribe to come to the full three hour session. And then I take the last hour of the transmission and I post those freely on the website. So people who don't have resources to be doing it or are just interested in the experiences can actually do the meditation and transmissions um, through the recording. And uh, it's, they've been so profound because as the, as the first cycle closed, the second cycle began and they gave them a beautiful name. They were called the Unity Teachings, Embodying Higher Light. And they've taken us on a journey through various aspects of consciousness and the light fields and things that are part of ascension. And they're helping us attune to our awareness of these things, but also to experience them directly. And what they've said is in the transmissions, they're not just um, teaching sessions. It's not just knowledge or information that's being given. It's really important that we directly experience the energy of what we're talking about. So they introduce us to the, you know, the cardinal elements and the, you know, the earth, fire, air, water as living forces. They take us into the ascension grid. They introduce us to Metatron. They introduce us to the Hathors and so on. And each time we do it, we have an energetic contact with that aspect of consciousness. And so the, you know, the experiences that people have been living through these have been so profound and so healing. And I know you've, you can even share it, Emma, because I know you've done many of these transmissions. I don't think I've missed one yet. <laughs> <laughs> from the beginning. And I have to say they're so profound. And it's, it's not even, um, for me, it's, I, I just go into a deep, deep meditation. I am sometimes able to follow the imagery, sometimes not, but regardless of what the imagery or the guided meditation is, like I come out definitely having shifted something mm -hmm. or it feels like I feel lighter and more expanded. So definitely recommend them to everyone. You have them, we'll share your website later, but you have them on YouTube as well, which is wonderful. Um, which also brings me to when you were, talking about how the unity field healing sessions were are also being supported by these light beings which was actually very visibly um like senses I could sense it as I was going to train through the training and my favorite my most favorite thing was what you said which is if you sort of miss something when you're um, doing a session or, or you somehow, you know, forget one of the moves, you can always trust these light beings to do the work for you. So you don't have to worry about making mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> so. exactly but I, I definitely <laughs> recommend everyone to um, check out unityfieldhealing.com and, uh, and experience one of these transmissions or more of them if they they're feeling called to um 
which brings me to um you you touched upon this a little bit when we we jumped into the light beings but can you can you talk a little bit about the contrast of your life as an md and life as an energy healer and <laughs> you're a <an> pioneer <laughs> like how do they fit together and how does that work it, it's interesting because they don't they don't fit together in practical work but they fit together in the essence of my soul so for example we all have a soul history and anybody who's drawn to healing work has within their own soul's history or their akash is the term that people like to use a memory of things related to healing and so as a healer in the 3D world, of course, I was drawn to medicine, just like people are drawn to all the aspects of 3D healing arts, like, you know, nursing or physiotherapy or dentistry or, you know, some aspect of healing work. But on a soul level, I was drawn to healing from the perspective of internal energy changes that can bring healing back in a state where the balance has been lost. And so this is not how Western medicine tends to work with illnesses and with physical conditions and psychological conditions, but it is how Eastern medicine has always worked with, with this type of stuff. So the different medicines are good for different things. Like I always say to people, if you're in a car accident and you have a broken arm, it's not a time to go get a Reiki session. <laughs> it's time to go to the hospital and get your, your bones set and get a cast put in place to hold the bone to help you heal. Your body will do the healing, but you have to support the healing through this process. Mm -hmm. if, if something is emergent like that, Western medicine is the way to go. If you've developed a, a cancer or a tumor or something in your body, sometimes to have it removed is a very intelligent thing to do, like to trust Western medicine to do this kind of work. But you can also work internally to create transformations. You can understand where the tendency or the propensity for certain things to manifest comes from. And so every one of us, there's no exception to the rule, myself included, will have internal things that will create imbalances in our world. And this can make us more likely to have certain kinds of illnesses or psychological experiences or you name it. And the work we do on ourselves is always about restoring balance and to help the light of the soul come through the body to maintain harmony and balance within the system, which promotes healing and wellness as an experiential condition. So when I work in Western aspects of medicine, you have to honor the, the system it is. And most of my work is in imaging. And the interesting thing about that is before I even realized what I was doing, I was, I, had, I was attracted to the part of medicine that uses sound waves and magnetic fields and all these kinds of things to create pictures of the state of the body. And so medicine, before we had the kinds of, you know, really amazing imaging technology that we have today, you know, in the last 20 years, was we couldn't do that kind of stuff. But in modern medicine, almost everything relies on imaging. You know, if you have surgery, they do a scan and we have to know where the disease is so then you know what you're working with in terms of the treatment. And so it's actually an aspect of Western medicine that's founded in energy. And so it's all these energy interactions that create the pictures that help us see what the issue is. And then the healing is following models of things we've learned in Western medicine. And sometimes people who learn about holistic healing want to dismiss Western medicine. And I always encourage people not to do that because there's so many gifts. Western medicine is also a blessing. It's a gift of spirit and it was given to help humanity heal and to do things in a really healthy way. But there's more to the story than just Western medicine. So we can really open our minds and bring other things into our potential for healing and well-being. And they're very important. And the ideal world is where we learn to live so well that we don't manifest the things that Western medicine needs to tend to take care of. And so we can work on a very personal level in ways that medicine in our, in our culture is not oriented to do. But that's a personal thing. It's not really the system of medicine per se. 
So I walk between these worlds, I guess, because I can understand where they both fit into the paradigm. Now, I didn't always do that. <laughs> I felt they were in conflict with each other, too. But as I understood more holistically the, you know, the nature of all of that, then I made peace with, with that relationship, I guess, if you will. And, but my work is more focused, my medicine work is more about imaging. So I teach imaging, I teach people how to recognize disease patterns and all these things through imaging processes like MRIs and ultrasounds and that kind of stuff. And then the energy work and the, the consciousness work that I do is more about the internal state of the body and things that we can do to be well and to achieve healing in other ways. And so I, the way I kind of see Western medicine is it, it's what you have to do when you're at the end of the road. <laughs> it's, it's what you have to do when things have manifest in the 3D right. world sometimes, yeah. I can imagine, um, since I have the pleasure of having you here, how do you um, see the current state that we find ourselves in, in a global pandemic? How, how do you see that in, in spiritual terms, in that like wider view? what's happening? <laughs> wow. So that's an amazing question. <laughs> I love it. The answer is big. So when you start understanding spiritual things, I guess, you start to realize that everything happens for a reason. Everything has a purpose. There's nothing that manifests in the 3D world that's without purpose. And we, we don't tend to look at life that way. We kind of see things as great or problems. But when you look at it from a holistic perspective, you realize whether something looks good or looks bad or seems beneficial or seems deleterious, it's still part of a process that's trying to teach us truth. And it's trying to bring us back into a state of well being. And what we see manifest are things that are occurring because of energy or patterns of consciousness that end up creating these stories or these experiences. And they're all part of an opportunity to reframe our view on it to create healing. The pandemic has been fundamental to the planetary shift in my mind because it's introduced an experience that knows no borders, no boundaries. It doesn't care about your creed or your color. It doesn't care about your wealth. It doesn't care about any of the things that are important to you know, 3D human beings, it has the potential to, to harm anyone and everybody has the potential to heal or to overcome the challenge of what it is. And as it spreads around the world, it's kind of creating all kinds of experiences. And the first thing it did was it, it stopped a system. The world had was really on autopilot. Like we were kind of living in a way where it was all about commerce and business and you know this kind of stuff and it it just threw a monkey wrench into that wheel and it made people stop have time on their own spend time with their families have time to reflect on their own value what about their life is working what about their life is not working and when you see it through that lens you realize what would have done that like what in the world would have done that for humanity if we didn't live something like this and as people have done that, people have made in their own lives unbelievable changes. Like people have really returned to values that they felt like they had lost, but they knew were important in it. Making time for themselves, spending time with their partners, having time with their children, all this kind of stuff. And at the same time, it's challenged everybody because we're being asked to do all kinds of new things and learn new things like being on Zoom, for example, or, you know, operating in, in different ways, working from home. And then the challenges that come with that, like how do you work at home when you have two children who want your attention and, and so on and so forth. And so people have had to become much more understanding and compassionate with each other. And the human part of of work has been brought to the surface. If you have employees you're working with and they have children at home, you have to make concessions to let them take care of their children if you want them to work from home. And so it's reframed the way so, my, so many people view these relationships and these experiences. So it's not, I mean, I'm being very Pollyannic about it and I know it's much more challenging than that. And also on the flip side, there are people who've lost people in their families that are very dear to them who 
were, you know, killed through the process of COVID. There's been thousands and thousands, hundreds and thousands, millions of deaths around the planet because of it. And so I don't want to make light of it, but I want to add an element of understanding that the process is by, it has wisdom in it and there's a design to it. And when it comes to living and surviving the, the pandemic, there, when you understand things through a spiritual lens, you realize a person will only stop living or you know, transition through death when it's right for their soul. It has to be something that is governed by the soul. So it's not about an external physical condition. It's about a spiritual timing. And so people are part of the transition that are part of the COVID. It's because their soul is involved in making that decision. And as humans, when we lose someone, of course, it's so heartbreaking. You know, anybody who's lost a parent or a partner or a child or anybody near to them knows the devastation of going through that. But from a spiritual lens, when you understand the eternity of the soul and that everything in the human world has a timing to it, you can make some peace with that, I, I, I think. At least that's been my way of living. And so it's a big experience, it's planetary in scope. And I believe it's connected to the ascension because it's evoking all these changes and transitions. And it's also revealing relationships and things. And then on top of that, we have like this massive political crisis in the world and all kinds of other things going on. And, and everything is like an exposure. It's like, you know, the underbelly of humanity gets to be revealed and everything gets to be exposed. And at first that seems shocking and devastating and frustrating because you can't seem to create solutions around problems. But we have to start there because we can't fix things if we don't understand where they're going wrong in the first place. So, so much of this time, the energy between 2020 and 2024 is exposure and learning how to navigate that energy. And as we go more forward in time, it's going to settle down. It's going to get easier than it is now. And we're going to begin to feel freer and really in a place where we can begin to create the new, if you will. But this is a little bit a period where we're destructuring a lot of things that have been part of human um, social systems and, you know, um, international relationships and things like that. Everything is, is being brought forward to be re-examined and reconfigured in some way. As we move forward in the new energy, things that are not supported in a higher consciousness reality can't continue to exist. And so corruption in business, corruption in government, all these kinds of things have to be washed away. And how do we wash them away if we don't expose them in the first place? So you can kind of see how it all ties together. So COVID is just one element of that. It's it's it, it's not the whole picture. It's just one little cog in a much bigger puzzle of change. And so what I always remind people of is it's a time to be so kind with yourself and to be so kind with each other. It's a very challenging time on the planet in all kinds of ways. And we have to return to the truth teachings. We have to return to the essence of life. And there's nothing more profound than learning to be present in the moment and be present with the people you're with in that space and to be there in a conscious way that's loving and supportive and masterful. And the more we do that as human beings, we begin to create a world that's based on those foundational energies. And in my mind, that's what this is all about. It's like a test. Can we do it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I love and that's very beautifully put. I'm not going to even try to summarize that. I think it's touched on many beautiful points, which brings me to um, I love asking my guests. I know you're someone who who is very open to um, evolution in, in all sorts of ways three-dimensional and otherwise. So <laughs> what's what's next for you, John? What's what's happening? What are you curious about? What's next? It, it's interesting because this this whole period of COVID we've been talking about, it's it's touched me in my own personal life in different ways too. And the one thing I realized is I want more time for my relationships and I want more time for my spiritual work. And so I've begun restructuring my reality around that. And so I focus a lot more, or I'm at the threshold of focusing a lot more on the spiritual work 
and the teaching of healing that comes through that paradigm and less on the older 3D aspect of my work, you know, the, te the university teachings and all that kind of stuff. So I'm in a personal transition and I'm going to have a lot more time, which has been the challenge for me because when you do lots of things, you still only have 24 hours in a day. <laughs> and so to be able to focus your time in the way you want is, is a conscious decision. I have, you have to, or at least for me, I had to get to a point where I thought, I need to do that for myself because that's what my soul is asking for. That's really what is right for me at this point in time. And so I'm in the middle of that transition. And so it's a space making time. It's a making space for new things. And what, they, what the new things are are not revealed yet. Now I know they're aligned with, with the work I'm doing, but, um, and they'll be, it'll be teaching and doing workshops and seminars to help people move into the essence of the new energy in different ways. And, uh, but I could easily see myself doing, you know, larger events or taking people on journeys, spiritual journeys and discovering things by being in contact with the energy of those spaces, because that's really been a profound part of my own spiritual transformation. So all those things are possible, but I, I, they're, just ideas at this point. <laughs> you're, you're opening up to, you know, yes, you're of the space for them. Exactly. To, yeah. Which is wonderful. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm also hearing you say, like, even when your Kundalini awakens, there's still some work to do. And oh, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> figuring out, which is good to know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You will be refined. Like, we're, you know, the a diamond is coal under pressure so it's like the big black blob of coal under the pressure of transformation and it turns into the diamond and as human beings it's a good metaphor i think we you know we're, we all live and learn and have experiences and we have really pivotal experiences that are fundamental to our awakening and re you know reframing our perceptions on reality but that doesn't take away the essence of the soul's development and so we're going to be refined and refined and refined until we can ourselves live in this higher state of consciousness and being. So, you know, wherever our ego gets in the way or our fears get in the way or all the things that can interfere, you can rest assured life is going to bring us experiences. <laughs> yeah. But meanwhile, there's support. There's your beautiful unity <laughs> field healing. So there's support for you That's available. Right. That's uh, right. So, John, where can people find more about your beautiful work? So the easiest way is through the website download. So www.unityfieldhealing.com. And that just, it's all one word together. And uh, I think you mentioned you'll put a link down below. So if people uh, click through the link, they'll go to the website and you'll see there at the top, there's kind of a navigation bar. So you'll see tabs for unity field work, for meeting practitioners who are doing the work. And many practitioners do distance sessions. So you can even if they're not local to your area, you can do sessions in other ways. So if there's a practitioner you're drawn to work with, uh, you can see who has posted there. Uh, there's information about practitioner training and then a section on the Syrian work and the transmissions. And there's a store with some products that are Ascension related products. So just navigate through the top bar and it'll take you page through page and you can discover all kinds of things. And there's, there's lots of videos on the YouTube channel lectures on the unity field healing work with some visuals and those kinds of things. So there's lots of resources if people are keen to learn. Yes, which I love. And you're also offering the practitioner trainings online so people could yes. attend them anywhere they are, which is wonderful. Yeah. And there's there's Thank three coming up. There's one in May at which what we started to do down is time them for different parts of the world. So it's easier for people in different places to do the training. So we have one timed for Australia coming up this month and then um, London, England and Europe. Uh, at the end of May and uh, probably the middle of June and then Pacific North America and South America in July. So there's lots of opportunity to train even at a decent hour of the day. Yes. Yeah. And from my point of view, it was a lot of fun. It wasn't like, you know, you're not, um, it, you're doing by experiencing and practicing. So, which was wonderful to experience. Yeah, really hands on. Thank you so much, John, for being here and for all the beautiful 
good light work that you do and oh, really you. offer the world. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, and thank you, Damla, for taking the time to do the, the interview and for all the beautiful work you do with your clients and people too. It's really, you're a beautiful, radiant being and you're doing magical things. So I, I bow to you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to Conversations with Healers. If this episode spoke to you in any way, please leave a review or comment, like or love it, and share it with others in your life. This is a true soul love project from my heart to yours. I really appreciate your help in spreading the word. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and check out other episodes to listen to some extraordinary healing stories and advice. Have a beautiful and wonderful day.